Now today we get to demonstrate how one might create active forms from passive structures. The seat is now in, everything has been tied in with the springs, all of the uh, stuffing is in, all of the stitching is in, it has created a reliable, firm edge roll along with a center of gravity that's further back in the seat. It is springy yet firm and a reliable uh, rear section of the seat where a person stays buoyant relative to the inside back. The bottom band is now partially in and this is what has been a contingency all along how one might create a bottom band that can actually flex that will not bind the stuffings when the piece deploys. We landed upon an idea of creating a structure using 16 gauge wire. And I'm going to walk over to you to where you can see this. I've stripped away a little bit of this wire. It is a, an oil brazed wire that um, has craft paper around it. And I'm going to twist it just a little bit to where you can see how it has a memory it springs. And so it was stitched into the burlap the seam and double stitched so it would be quite tight and then anchored to the frame behind. This piece has always been a challenge because it did not have any of these structures built into it. It is surprising that it worked as well as it did for as long as it did. However, we don't know how well it actually worked because the stuffings were fairly well degraded along this bottom band. I'm going to open this up and as I do, if you can catch this shot, what if you can imagine what happens to the stuffing, it's going to roll out eventually. If my hand were the stuffing, you see how it collapses and binds. And so the conundrum is once the piece is completely deployed, the seat deploys, what happens to all that stuffing? Does it just pooch out and create a binding along the hinge mounts? That would be uh, that would cause failure of the seat. So this sorry about the jiggling idea of setting a spring into it to basically a passive structure worked. I'm going to deploy it. The edge wire, I shouldn't call it edge wire, the spring wire was tucked into a folded piece of jute webbing. Tucked inside it spans the entire frame and then the piece was stitched on both sides including the, um, the spring and the interior of the, um, of the uh, bottom band scrim. And so we basically have two pieces of spring wire that are lashed together and then they are nailed into a rabbited section of the um, tacking frame. Now I'm going to move the seat just a little bit to where you can see how it it moves. Much like a piece of elastic might work. Of course they didn't have elastic like we have today in the late 19th century, not that I know of. So the center draws back. It's pretty subtle in a small it is subtle. image, but it is pulling show it where it draws back. Just when point it to pulls, it. It pulls forward at its apex, but there's still enough tensions that when it's, when it's in its seating position or it's in its mattress position, that it pulls that scrim back into the mattress cavity. And that's what we want to happen because the stuffing that is tucked into this needs to come back into the mattress cavity, otherwise it will bind the, um, the hinges and just create a mess along that front edge. Let's move to the mattress interior. I'll move this spring out of the way. I'll deploy the inside back. I'll talk a little bit more about building active forms from passive structures. Again, I'll have to get some of this, this burlap out of the way. One of the challenges about this mattress has been that every time it deploys, the stuffing just ends up plopping back over on itself. Eventually, 
all of that stuff in because it's not anchored in, at least was not, begins to draw down into the cavity. And, and after a while, you just have lumps and voids. So we've created structures basically from pra passive, passive uh, structures that will hold the material in position, allow it to flex, uh, as, as, as the piece is allowed to flex. You can see that these uh, bridle stitches are anchored to the inside back structure, the webbing structure, so as it moves, you can see it luffs, but as it flexes, it will pull the stuffing back in and stay in position. Okay, so sorry about that. I'm going to go ahead and deploy it fully open. And then I'm going to demonstrate to you a structure that... Where do you want me? Just come just a little bit closer. That I've um, engineered to go into the piece. This is going to be the scrim that goes over the top of the stuffing. There's going to be a massive amount of uh, Spanish moss and hair and... Uh, and some of this is the reused the mattress. Original yeah, the original. Some new that will be set into the cavity that will basically create the softness and, and uh, support uh, over the springs. And so I've created baffles that will, will lash down to the spring scrim and this area, this upper, I guess that's the dorsal area around your, your shoulders and the cervical area around the neck will be filled independently of the torso. So a little bit later on we'll be able to see, we'll be able to demonstrate what the stuffing looks like in the interior. But when this is lashes down, you can see this membrane creates a wall. It's walling off the stuffing from the dorsal to the lumbar. So as it flexes, that stuffing cannot move in either direction and end up creating voids. Once that is in, you'll be able to see, basically we're going to have a level horizon for our pod. And that will give us a reliable surface in which we can attach our muslin and then eventually the um, uh, show cover. Another chamber is down here in the torso section and the hips. It's already lashed in. There's the wall. Create a vertical wall. Stuffing will butt up against this wall. And the scrim will pull over the top basically horizontal structure. There'd be a great deal of Algerian and core fiber tucked in to these gutters that are a result of the um, trajectory of the springs. There'll be an edge roll that is created along the side edge where as a person sits down they don't just, sorry, drop into the cavity. And, Earthquake! Uh, and feel the uh, frame edge. And so um, it is a work in, um, in process.